today's story is about Joseph. And this is part four of the Bible story series. So let's go to Genesis chapter 30 and verse 24. And it says, And she called his name Joseph and said, The Lord shall add to me another son. Now we're going to go down seven chapters later to Genesis chapter 37 and verse 3. And it says, Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. Back a couple of chapters, it says that when his older brothers, or stepbrothers, what do you call it? Yeah, stepbrothers, would do something wrong, lie, steal, cheat, they all had this click, so they wouldn't tell daddy. Big Joseph, did not want them to sin, and he would tell his father, they're not telling you the truth. So this created hatred from his older brethren towards him. So let's see what happened. In verse 4 it says, And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. So now, Joseph is going to have a dream actually two dreams, and this makes his brothers hate him all the worse. Verse 6, And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about, and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream. More and behold, the sun and moon and eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and my mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him, and his father observed the same. So then their, their father sends the older boys to tend to the sheep, take the sheep down away from home, better pastures for grazing. Then he sends Joseph down to see how they're doing. I'll check in on them, see, you know, if, bring them supplies and see if they needed anything else, just check in on them, see how they're doing. So Joseph goes down, and a man finds him wandering in the field trying to figure out where his brethren went. And the man tells him, I heard that they were going to Goshen. So he goes down there and finds his brethren. While his brethren see him coming from a distance, and they start inspiring to kill him. And it says, in verse 18, And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit. And we will say, Some evil beast hath devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. So they're like, huh, we'll see what comes to his dreams on this one. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him that he might not rid him, that he might rid him out of their hands, to deliver him to his father again. So Reuben had a soft heart. And he was going to 
get his brother back out of the pit and send him to his father once they were not there. He didn't want him to die. So they put him in the pit. Reuben goes off to do some things and some traders come by. And the brethren are like, hey, we can get some money out of this deal. So they get him out of the pit and they sell him. Reuben comes back and says, where'd he go? They're like, oh, we sold him. And then, of course, that, Reuben goes ballistic and basically says that it's going to be on his life. Um, well, let's just go to verse 29. And it says, and Reuben, re and Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit. And he rent his clothes, and he returned unto his brethren and said, The child is not, and I, whither shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, This have we found no now whether it be thy son's coat or not, or no. And of course this brought great grief to his father. In the meantime, Joseph is on his way, as a slave, down to Egypt, and is sold to Potiphar, captain of the guard. And he determined on his way down there that he would stay firm to Christ and not be sucked into the um, heathen traditions and evil ways of the heathen, of the Egyptians. Well, he's working in Potiphar's house. And eventually he works his way up as being, he takes care of everything in the house. The only thing that Potiphar knows of is the fact that he's got food available. Joseph takes care of everything else. So he's, he's pretty high up in the house. Well, Potiphar's wife casts her eyes upon him. So let's go see what happened there. And it says, and after, uh, in chapter 39, verse 7, it says, and it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wanted not what is with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And it came to pass, as she spoke, spake day by day to Joseph, that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. So then one of the days he comes in and she grabs onto his coat and persists again. And he says no and runs, and the coat ends up getting left in her hands. So she makes up this story that he is harassing her and tells it to other men of the house and waits for her husband to get home. And he, she says, look, you brought this Hebrew in and he, uh, to mock us, and he um, laid hands on me, and lo, it's, uh, when I cried out, he left his coat with me and ran away. Which, of course, is going to make Potiphar mad. Of course. So Potiphar puts Joseph in prison. Through all of that, he then becomes the helper in the prison of like feeding the different prisoners and whatnot. And two of the prisoners that happen to be in there after a while are the butler and baker of Pharaoh. And they have dreams. Joseph tells them the meaning of the dreams that one would die and one would be restored to his place. Well, he asked that they will mention him to the king so he can get out of jail. But of course they forget one gets killed, the other one goes back to his place, continues on, everything's fine. Then the king has a dream twice in one night, two different ways. One of seven fat cows and th seven thin cows and then seven fat ears of corn, seven thin ears of corn. And he doesn't know what this means. And then the butler that was restored to his place says, 
You know what? There was a guy in the prison. He told me, he told the butler and I, or the baker and I, about our dreams and the interpretation, and it, it came to pass. You know, he, uh, you killed the baker and kept me, which is what he told us three days beforehand. The king's like, I gotta see him. So he is taken in, Joseph is taken in to the king. He gives the interpretation with God's help because he has stayed faithful to God. And the interpretation is that in, they will have seven years of good growth in the land and then seven years of famine. And the king puts Joseph in charge of this. And I'm just telling you all of this because if I read this, this video is going to end up being an hour long video. So I'm just giving you the highlights of it. So Joseph is put in charge of gathering, making sure the food is being gathered, stored up for the seven years of famine. Seven years of famine come, a few years go by, and his brethren, back at home, are getting low on food. So they got to go to Egypt because they've heard that Egypt has a lot of good stored food. What they don't know is the fact that it's their brother's fault. Good fault. So they go down. They have issues. They still don't know that that's who they're working with is their brother. They go back down. And he reveals it unto them and says, I'm your brother. And of course, they're terrified because here's Joseph. They just bowed down before him last time and this time. And things start clicking. That's the dreams. And we just fulfilled them. We didn't want to do that. <laughs> so through this, and they're also fe fearful because he is second ruler in the kingdom. He is directly under the king. So if they mess up, he can have them all locked up in jail, slain, made as slaves. They're totally in his mercy. But instead, he tells them to go get his father and their family and bring them to Egypt to have peaceful lives. Then after a couple hundred years, of course, there's a big population from them. And a new pharaoh sees a advantage of this to get slaves. They're all put in slavery. And through the help of Moses, they're able to return to the promised land. So through this long story, I hope you will take these lessons as, it, as did Joseph and stay firm to Christ. If, even if you're sold as a slave or through the hard times, I bet your hard times are not as, that bad as being sold as a slave into a country that you likely don't know the language of. So I pray that you will take this to heart and to follow God's commandments in all that he has told us to do. Please like, share, and subscribe, and walk with God.